There's an old saying, that you never know when you're going to get your last win. And this has rung true numerous times in recent years. Just look at guys like Jimmy Johnson in 2017, Tony Stewart in 2016, and Dale Jr. in 2015. But no other guy to strap into a NASCAR race car has encapsulated this more than that of Mark Martin. In 2005, Martin looked to be retiring, but was wrangled back to the number six Ford for Jack Roush the next year in 2006. But in that 2005 season is where some saw him getting his final win, when he nabbed the victory at Kansas during the chase that year. His 2006 season was winless, and heading to Bobby Genzo one car seemed like a huge downgrade. So it really didn't seem like he'd do too good at getting wins, especially seeing how he was going part time. But Mark prevailed onward, getting a heartbreaking second place finish in the 2007 Daytona 500, and after Ginn's team merged with DEI, he'd pilot the number 8 Chevy to near wins in the 2008 season. But by mid-2008, it was revealed to the world that Martin had worked out a deal to drive Rick Hendrick's number 5 Chevrolet in 2009. While initially the team rolled off slowly, it wouldn't be long until he scored a popular and much deserved win at the Phoenix Raceway. But he didn't stop there. A few weeks later, he topped the board at Darlington. Then he got a thrilling strategic win at Michigan. And by the end of TNT's summer stretch, he had another win, this time a dominant one at the Chicagoland Speedway. And while it was a bit of a struggle to qualify for the chase, once he was there, he was the top seed due to scoring so many wins more than anyone else in the field. Starting out in the 14th position at New Hampshire, Mark had a bit of work to do to get up towards the front. To start out, he honestly was the weakest of the Hendrick drivers, as Gordon Johnson and even Dale Jr. all had top 10 cars, while the number 5 was hovering around 15th. Chevrolet looked to be strong on all counts though. HMS, SHR, and even Earnhardt Ganassi Racing with Montoya all had speed. Aside from the number 42, all had Hendrick power as well. But once Martin got his footing, he started making up ground towards the front, nabbing a spot every so often. By the 60th lap, he was up to 11th, then quickly after, his first chase domino fell when it came to the competition. Hmm. Trouble All for the right. nine car, Not Casey Kane. Smoke billowing from the back of his Dodge, and we told you there had been people leaving, uh, all kinds of internal conflict, people leaving, bailing out of the engine room because they said they were going to close it down. Martin and the number five team used the yellow for adjustments, and to their credit, it worked. On the ensuing restart, Mark began to make up spots in the top ten. By the next restart, he was up to eighth, and two drivers had established themselves up front as the dominant ones that he would have to beat if he was to make up ground past just eighth. Tony Stewart and Juan Pablo Montoya. If Martin were to compete for the win, these were the guys he needed to beat. Past 100 laps, he actually sat comfortably in sixth with an ever-improving race car when it came to every adjustment the team made. Being a bit snug in the corner, the car just needed a few more changes to get it up to contending level. On the ensuing caution, the number five team got Mark into the top five for the first time all day, just shy of the halfway point. But quickly after that, on the next caution, Martin would pit while the top six would stay out. This shift in strategy would be instrumental in the finish of his day. The Kellogg Chevy would restart outside the top 10. Just behind him though, the big one would break out, starting a small rash of yellows. There's Gordon, top of your screen. Like he, yeah, just brushes the wall, gets kind of bottled up behind him, but you see it uh, might have been a little bit of a chain reaction, but you see Sadler starts this, the big accident in the back. Yeah, I don't know if he got touched uh, by the seven car there or if, if he just got loose on his own coming up out of turn two. See the 98 car, Paul Menard nosed into the wall. 34 of Andretti is there. It's so, got trouble. trouble here, a little contact with Jeff Burton going around. Outside, spin behind you, spin behind you, outside. Oh, this was a big break for a big contender, as Tony Stewart was having hubcap issues. He could at least have his team diagnose it with these cautions before their next pit stop. Meanwhile, the teammates of the five, Johnson and Dale Jr., actually got up to 1-2 before yet another yellow. While the top two HMS guys pitted, Martin stayed out with Kurt Busch. Now, the five car had track position. 
and with less than 100 to go, he pounced on the leader. Kevin, there's the double zero of David Rudiman, and you guys picked him as one of the non-chasers to keep an eye on today. And now Martin gets the lead away from Kirk Bush. Martin would stretch out his lead for the run. What he needed now was a caution before about 55 to go, or for it just to go green till the end. Or else, well, he'd be pitting under green and be put at an odd position. And the racing gods never made it easy for Mark Martin in his career, so of course the yellow didn't fly. It should be, and Mark Martin has not said anything on the radio about this car, so Alan Gustafson made the call. No changes. It's going to be four tires, Sunoco fuel for this five car. Guys, it played into their hands. Pit strategy early on. We'll see what's going to shake down here, as this could be the final stop for the five. But interestingly enough, this actually started many of the top team's pit cycles early, as Martin and Kurt Busch could make up ground on fresher tires if they hadn't done otherwise. Due to this, with 28 to go, Martin took the lead back from a pitting Bobby Labonte. But in typical NASCAR fashion, especially at the time, debris brought out another yellow. With 18 to go, the field was right on Mark's tail. Surprised with Mark Martin taking that outside. Let's see if it works out for him. He's getting a huge push from his teammate Jimmy Johnson down into turn one. Trying to clear the two car and he Martin has cleared him. Yeah, he gets the, he gets the spot. Worked out for him. I had I questioned that move also as taking comes. that outside lane. Denny Hamlin trying to go to all the way to second. They're gonna be three wide going into that. Man, look at look at Hamlin drive the car in there and lock the left front up. Hamlin now trying oh, to go Junior underneath. Into the Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the wall. Yeah. With teammate Dale Jr. getting wrecked, the field again would restack behind Martin, this time with only 13 to go. Once again, he'd pull away, but behind him, Juan Pablo Montoya was charging like a bat out of hell on fresher tires and arguably a better car. The last thing Mark needed was a caution. If Mark was to get his 40th cup win, he'd definitely have to earn it this time. With only three to go, the final restart was at hand. To the outside lane. Martin has to cross the start finish line first, and he does it. And now it's anybody's race as Martin tries to beat Montoya in one, and Montoya gets there first. Comes Kirk Bush on the inside of Denny Hamlin trying to make it three wide. Montoya great, made a great start there. He laid back a little bit and got a nice run. He timed it perfectly. That's how you have to do it to try to maintain that with that outside car having the uh, control. Here comes Hamlin. He's cleared Jimmy Johnson. Side by side, they are door to door out of turn four, and Martin will take the advantage by a car. Oh, what a move. move. Wow, clear, that was a clear, great clear, run clear. off of that corner for Mark Martin. That might have been the move that wins him this Not race. So fast right here. Montoya's still looking hard, chewing on that rear bumper. Comes Hamlin to the outside. This is what Mark Martin wants to see in his mirror. Somebody getting back here to occupy the 42 car. Coming down for the white flag, this time by Mark Martin trying to hold off and hold on to a five car length advantage for the white flag. Martin has never won a race at New Hampshire. See Kyle Busch there on the outside of Jimmy Johnson trying to take that four spot away. Got a spin off of turn four. He's already taken the white flag. So they'll race back here to the checkered flag. Caution's not out yet, they're still racing. No caution yet. They got cars sitting here, they're gonna have to throw the caution. Still not out. Still not out. It's going to come under the checkered they flag. Still green. I'm really now I'm coming to the checkers. Coming to the checkers. And it is officially watch over. Watch, watch out! Watch out! The checkers, it's, it's caution's out. You got the win. In front of over 100,000 fans, he took the victory, and after that, a victory lap. With his 40th career win, he extended his points lead to 35 over Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin. In victory lane, he said he needed to be pinched because it must be a dream. Unfortunately, the boogeyman of the 2000s would reclaim his rightful seat on the NASCAR throne and end that dream really quickly. Because with six races to go, Jimmy Johnson would grab the lead on his way to his fourth of five straight NASCAR Cup Series championships. As for Mark, well, he'd come home second in points behind Johnson, once again finishing runner-up. And... He would come back to the five car in 2010, 2011, but he can never really reclaim the magic of 2009. Similar to what Brett Favre did over in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings, Lightning just couldn't strike twice. In 2010, he'd missed the chase, with the highest finish being a second at Martinsville late in the season. 2011 saw another step back, 
So in 2012, he went back to going part-time, this time with Michael Walter Bracing. And in 2012, he did see his final chance at another win at the Pocono Raceway. Though Joey Logano, who Mark helped get to Cup, would unceremoniously move him out of the way and take his final shot at glory away. But on that sunny September afternoon in 2009, Mark got what would end up being his final time in victory lane. Because after all, you never know when you're going to get your last win. Thank you to all of you who watched. Leave a like on this video and share it if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel also. And thank you to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.